in attracting not only investment, but also in creating a very, very fair and a very warm and congenial and a welcoming uh, you know, investment-related uh, uh, policy. Then came, in 2014, November, the first piece of legislation that we have enact enacted in the state of Telangana is called as TSI Pass. Now, TSI Pass, for those of you who visited the U.S. or Europe, you would see on the toll gates something called as Easy Pass. So we wanted to make it extremely easy for any investor to come into Telangana and come in with that notion that entering into the state is extremely easy. I'll just give you three facets, three important features of the TSI Pass. For instance, Mr. Kamal Bali here wanted to open a new Volvo plant in Telangana, and he already has a piece of land. And I'm actually indirectly pitching to you, Kamal. <laughs> I want you to come out of Chennai and actually set up a plant here. Bangalore. My apologies. If he had a piece of land, if he had a, say, a 40 or a 50 acre piece of land, which is already allotted by the government or privately procured, he actually does not need a permission from the government to start construction of his factory. No other state in India will tell you this. No permission from state government, no permission needed from the local municipality, no permission needed from the local village panchayat. And this is by statute. This is not some minister standing in front of you and giving you his elevator pitch or investment pitch. No. This is backed by statute, by a legislation which I cannot change. All you have to do is self-certify yourself, come into the state of Telangana, start working, hit the ground running. Simultaneously, on the TSI Pass portal, Kamal, can key, Kamal and his team can key in the nature of the investment, the quantum of the investment, and whether it's a red, orange, or a green category industry, and how he plans to roll out in a specific time-bound manner. We take only 15 days to give you all clearances, irrespective of how many departments it involves. Sometimes it could involve as many as 30 departments, and sometimes it could be as few as five or six departments. No matter how many departments are involved, we promise by statute again, by legislation, by law, all clearances in 15 days. Now, if you don't deliver on the 15-day window, on the 16th day, it's an automatic approval. It's a deemed approval. No state in India will tell you this. Also, another thing happens on the 16th day. Not only is it a deemed approval, I have the ability as the minister, as the head of my department, to penalize any bureaucrat who is actually held responsible for any delay beyond the 15-day window to a sum of rupees 1,000 per day. Again, no state in India will tell you this. Last thing I'll tell you which this policy gives me, the TSI pass is, this policy gives me, empowers me as a minister. If Kamal will share with me the offer he has in terms of fiscal incentives and other things from Karnataka, from Tamil Nadu, from uh, possibly Maharashtra and Andhra, I have the ability and the flexibility through this policy to either meet or beat any of the offers from my competitor. That's what TSI passes. Now, in case you're wondering, this sounds too good to be true. Does it actually work, or is this guy just BSing his way through? Let me tell you. In the last eight years, we have given more than 20,000 clearances. We have been able to attract more than $35 billion of investment. We have been able to create more than 1.6 million direct jobs in Telangana, and the story has just begun. We've barely scratched the surface. So when I was gloating and bragging and saying the same story, narrating the same story, to the chairman of uh, KPMG in New York a couple of years ago, I told him, listen, no state in India will tell you this. You might want to promote this to your prospective investors looking at India. He smiled at me and he said, you can go ahead and say this. No state in the United States also will offer you this. So that is the sort of policy. That is the sort of policy that we have made in Telangana, which has truly catapulted us to the top of the league on the ease of doing business rankings. But I know ease of doing business is passe. Ease of doing business is okay. But what matters in today's world, in a competitive world, it's extremely important, is to be able to also lower the cost of doing business and improve the quality of doing business if you want to stay competitive. But I'll come to that in a bit. So the innovation I talk about does not confine itself to just government or one arm of government. Each of us, in our individual capacities, need to start working on innovation within our processes. And therefore, in Telangana today, in Hyderabad today, we have India's largest, in fact, the world's largest technology incubator called as T-Hub. We have India's largest 
prototyping facility called as T-Works. We have, in fact, a world's largest pharma city coming up, world's largest pharma cluster coming up in Hyderabad in about 19,000 acres. Now, why am I throwing around the world's largest, India's largest number or, 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 or the, the, you know, uh, words? The reason being, I know economies of scale are important. If India has to compete with China, we need economies of scale. I remember very vividly when Mr. Piyush Goel was here a couple of years back, we had a closed-door meeting with All India Medical Devices Manufacturers Association. This was right at the time when COVID started. So we were just interacting, taking questions. One of the leaders from the industry stood up. He said, sir, I loved your speech, but for me today, it costs lesser to import gloves and masks from China rather than make it completely here. So the transportation costs and everything else, all the import duties, et cetera, et cetera, still it is cheaper for me to import than to make in India. So how do I make in India? Of course, Piyush Goel gave a very nice speech about nationalistic feelings and a bunch of other things. But what I would recommend CII, and I think all of us together as governments, as state governments is, figure out a way how we can bring about those economies of scale into play, how we can actually compete with the large manufacturing countries like China, like Indonesia, like Malaysia, like Vietnam, how we can stay competitive vis-a-vis -vis the world in terms of quality, also in terms of cost, which I think is the biggest challenge. What do I mean infrastructure? I mean the second I that I mentioned, infrastructure. We not only need good power infrastructure, we need industrial infrastructure, we need water, we need sewerage treatment plants, we need effluent treatment plants, we need zero liquid discharge facilities, we need clean rooms, all the things that are required so that India doesn't again miss out. We missed out on green revolution. We missed out on industrial revolution, the first one. We are not missing out on the digital revolution now that is unleashing and uh, that is unfolding right in front of our eyes. But I think what's even more important is industry 4.0, industrial revolution 4.0, that is likely to unfold right in front of our eyes and we can't afford to miss this, especially when the world is looking at us with interest. I meet a number of investors who are from overseas. Each of them tells me, my strategy going forward after COVID is China plus one. China for China. This is the mantra that I keep hearing from every single overseas investor that I meet. Therein lies the opportunity for the Indian industry to partner, to joint venture, to seize the moment. And if, like Justice Envy Ramanagaru said, unless you take some bold decisions, you could be right, you could be wrong sometimes. But we need to be bold. We need to move forward. Because there is no dearth of capital. If you are in the right frame of mind, I do not think there is ever a better point in time than now to make those bold decisions, bold moves, because capital is there for the offing. It's up to you to grab it. Now, the third thing I'll tell you is inclusive growth. The third I is inclusive growth. What do I mean by inclusive growth? Am I talking the rural-urban divide? Am I talking, I was just commenting to Suchitra that there are not enough women in the room. Of course, there are not enough women in legislature also. This is also predominantly a boys' club. The thing is, inclusive group, inclusive growth is about bringing that, bridging that divide, urban, rural, the social, across different social classes, across different economic stratus. Because each time I bring an investment into Telangana, it is extremely difficult for me to take an investor away from Hyderabad, the investment magnet called Hyderabad. When I tell them that India's largest textile park is in Warangal, why don't you invest there? They keep asking me, how do I get to Warangal quickly? How do I make sure that my management moves to Warangal? You know, is there, a, is there a flight? Is there a chopper? How do I make them you know, I, I avoid that one and a half or two hours of road journey? I understand the problem. I understand the challenge. But unless we, forget, we figure out a way to bridge this rural-urban divide, unless we promote the tier two towns, unless we start looking at opportunities in the second tier towns, because, you know, there is no need for us to focus excessively and obsess on metros. We know what's happening with metros. As was just pointed out, let me say this a bit unabashedly because, you know, it is my fiduciary responsibility to champion the cause of Telangana. As much as I am an Indian, I'm a minister from Telangana. So let me remind you, all those of you who are from Chennai, your city is a bit humid. Delhi, as you all know, has the pollution problem. 
Bangalore, as we all know, it's very, very difficult to move. You know, it takes three hours from the airport to anywhere in Bangalore. So, what, what does that leave us with? Bombay is too expensive. Kolkata, I wouldn't think of. Ahmedabad has its own challenges. Let me not get into it. So that leaves us with, I think, one very prominent city, city which, uh, you know, which, where you're sitting right now, Hyderabad. And as you, have, as, as you move, as you navigate, as you navigate from the city airport into the city, you would have realized that the infrastructure is much superior, far better. The quality of air you can breathe in Hyderabad. It's not a gas chamber yet. The greenery that you see, in fact, we've just bagged the world's Green City Award as recently as a couple of weeks ago, beating Montreal, Paris, Bogota, beating Bangalore and all the Indian cities fair and square. In terms of quality of living, we rank second to none. Last five years in a row, Mercer has rated us as a city with the best quality among Indian cities five years in a row, 2015 onwards till 2020. The quality of living is higher, the cost of living is lower, we are as good and better in terms of resources, in terms of human and other resources. And like I said, the government is extremely progressive and we are focused on building scale. We are focused on building infrastructure, ensuring that you, are, you not only survive but thrive in this brilliant city of ours. Now, the subject that was given to me is not just to promote Telangana but also talk about the economic agenda for the state. Let me just give you two statistics because you're all business leaders, you're all people of numbers. Ultimately, what matters is bottom line, I understand. So let me just give you a couple of numbers. When the state of Telangana was formed, our per capita income was 1,24,000 rupees. In seven years, flat, Telangana's per capita income is the highest in the country today, 2,78,000 rupees. It's a phenomenal rise of almost 130%. And this is the highest in the country. The national average is still 1,49,000 rupees. We're almost double the national average. The gross state domestic product of Telangana was 5 lakh 6 thousand crores in 2014. As of March 31st last year, it has risen to 11.55 lakh crores. Again, a phenomenal 128% increase. Now this will tell you, and we, we compare, com if you just compare notes and if you just think about it for a minute, if only the rest of the country had performed as well as Telangana in the last seven years, we would have been a 4.6 trillion economy, not a 3.1 trillion economy. Just giving you numbers. Let me also add a couple more things to what I just said. How did Telangana fare in the last eight years? Today, Telangana is home to one third of global vaccine production, human vaccine production, thanks to Suchitra, <laughs> thanks to Mahima Dakla, thanks to Biological Advance, Bharat Biotech, Indian Immunologicals, and of course, Shanta Biotech, all these companies, Sanofi, all of them together manufacture 9 billion doses of vaccines from Hyderabad alone. And with the recent expansion plans announced, by next year, it will be 14 billion doses manufactured out of Hyderabad alone, making it 50% of the global vaccine production, which is a phenomenal feat. Thanks to the prede my predecessors who have built Genome Valley, who have done an exceedingly good job in building Genome Valley, it has become now one of the most important life sciences clusters in the world, not in India, not in Asia. And we are truly proud of what it is. But now the challenge is taking it forward. So as part of that process to consolidate our strengths in life sciences spectrum, we have created India's largest medtech park at Sultanpur in Patancheru. And I'm happy that it has taken off really well. More than 50 companies have set shop there. And in fact, Asia's largest stent manufacturing facility is a company from Gujarat called SMT, Sahajanand Medical Technologies, has set up shop there and they have set up Asia's largest stent manufacturing facility with state-of-the-art, world-class clean rooms and everything else. Also, consolidating strength in life sciences, now we are aiming to create the world's largest pharma cluster in Hyderabad Pharma City. It's on the last leg, and I'm hoping to break ground very, very soon. We have gotten all the environmental clearances, so there's no challenges whatsoever. Last few cases that remain in the court is what is holding us back, or else it would have been up and running already. Life sciences, as important a sector as it is, especially post-COVID, we know the importance of healthcare, life sciences, etc. Other fields where we excel is information technology. In fact, for those of you who are from Bangalore, I'm not sure where they are. I'm glad you made it on time. 
Bangalore is by far, by far, way ahead of us in terms of overall numbers. But we are the Pepsi of the beverages market. We are number two, the second only to Bangalore. So we have more fire in the belly. The, fire, the government in Bangalore has lost the fire in the belly. They gave up. Bangalore grows because industry there isn't an inertia mode. You know, you are happy there, so you just want to grow right next door. Otherwise, there's no real reason for you to be there, honestly speaking. But let me tell you how we are different. In Hyderabad, the government is driving innovation. In Hyderabad, the government is actually playing the role of an enabler. We are continuously working on infrastructure. My predecessors have done it, and I'm continuing that good work forward. We are driving innovation by way of creating institutions like T-Hub, like V-Hub, Women Entrepreneurs Hub, like TSIC, the Telangana State Innovation Cell, like TASC, the Telangana Academy for Skills and Knowledge, like RICH, the Research and Innovation Center for Hyderabad, all of these entities have been created by government to spur innovation, to create these institutions which will eventually become the bedrocks for future startups, for future growth opportunities. Because today's startup is tomorrow's MNC. Today's startup is tomorrow's grown up. So therefore, as I was pointing out, government is actually driving the infrastructure growth here. What happened as a result in eight years? The most valuable technology companies in the world, I'll just give you some marquee names. Amazon's world's largest campus is not in Seattle. It is actually in Hyderabad. It's a 3.1 million square foot campus, and it is right here in the city of Hyderabad. It has been inaugurated in 2018. It started in 2014. We gave all permissions flat in 11 days to Amazon's world's largest campus. Google, Microsoft, Meta, uh, Uber, Salesforce, Apple, Micron, Qualcomm, the list goes on, Novartis, all of their second largest campuses in the world, Medtronic, are here in the city of Hyderabad, and all of them have come in the last seven years. This is a testament to the progressive governance at play. This is the testament, this is a proof of what a government with single-minded focus can achieve. I can go on, talk, talk a bit more about technology, but one number that will stand out. The IT exports from Telangana, in 2014 were 57,000 crores of rupees. As of March this year, they stand at a 248% increase, 1,83,000 crores, a whopping increase of 248%. That shows you how quickly Hyderabad has been growing. And for the first time in the history of this country, we have beaten Bangalore four quarters in a row in terms of office space absorption, which is typically a barometer for the growth, kind of growth, uh, the industry and the city is experiencing. And it's also, of course, a challenge for me as urban development minister because, you know, the more, you, the more quickly you grow, the more quickly you run into infrastructure challenges. Let me also quickly add a couple of other sectors, aerospace and defense, another very, very important sector where India has a huge opportunity. Hyderabad is doing really well. I don't know how many of you know this. Gareth uh, wouldn't mind knowing this also, I'm sure. President Joe Biden's helicopter cabin is also made in Telangana. In fact, Sikorsky is the company, along with Tata's, they make American President's helicopter cabin right here in the city of Hyderabad. Not only Sikorsky, but Lockheed, Boeing, GE, Honeywell, I can go on, the list is long. Several aerospace and defense companies, Safran, have made Hyderabad their home. We're looking to, of course, get more uh, English companies into, uh, you know, into Hyderabad and Telangana as well. Thank you, thank you, Gareth, for the support. So aerospace and defense is another very important sector for us. But... What is the way forward? What are we looking at? How do we see the, the, the $470 billion Telangana economy growing and becoming a trillion dollar economy? How do, we en how do we envisage the growth? Where do we envisage the growth, et cetera? Of course, the sectors that I've just mentioned are extremely important. Technology, of course, is an important sector. But I think what makes technology exciting is, you know, Hyderabad is that place I keep saying to a lot of people. Hyderabad is neither North India nor South India. If you ask me, it is where the north of India meets the south of India. It is where biology meets technology. It is where life sciences meets data sciences. It is where paratha meets dosa. It is where mangoverse meets metaverse. It's a brilliant, brilliant, uh, you know, melting pot where people from any part of India can feel at home. My friends from Chennai will have to excuse me, but anybody from north India will tell you that it's very difficult to survive in Chennai, not knowing 
not knowing Tamil or English. If you are a Hindi speaker, you'll have a tough time. Bangalore, like I said again, enough challenges. Kerala, too far south. We're bang in the middle of the country. And we have enough land. We have enough water. We have a very progressive government, 24 by 7 power. No corruption, no graft. What you see is what you get. No BS. This is what makes Telangana extremely attractive and extremely uh, you know, progressive. Well, how do I see the way forward? Besides, the, besides consolidating our strengths in life sciences, technology, aerospace, defense, we are focused on unleashing the power of rural livelihoods. So therefore, in Telangana, you have five different revolutions unfolding right in front of your eyes. Today, I'm proud to tell you this. Earlier, at one point of time, Andhra Pradesh, the United State of Andhra Pradesh, was called the granary of India. But today, Telangana is second only to Punjab in paddy production. And we have, our paddy production has grown manifold from 68 metric lakh tons in 2014 to 3 crore 50 lakh tons in 2021. Our paddy production is now so much, Government of India's Food Corporation of India is saying it can't procure any more from us. So that's, that's what we've done. We've hit the ceiling of sorts. So the Green Revolution is unfolding in Telangana. It is shaping up rather well because of our Honorable Chief Minister's focus on completing, expeditious completion of irrigation projects. Talking about irrigation projects, let me, all, let me ask all of you for a minute. I know you're all addicted to your mobile phones and social media. If you can kindly pull out, some of you at least, your mobile phone and please pull out Google for a minute, if you can. Just pull out Google. Please don't check your emails and WhatsApp messages. The question is, where is the world's largest lift irrigation project? You have to, you have to Google. I don't want Anil Epur telling me what the answer is. I want Google telling me what the answer is. <laughs> yes, yes ma'am. It is Kaleshwaram lift irrigation in Telangana. We lift water from 82 meters above sea level, bring it all the way to 618 meters above sea level. It's an engineering marvel which has been accomplished by the government of Telangana in a short span of four years. You see, we talk about three gorges and a bunch of other things. We don't talk about our own engineering feats. We don't talk about, uh, we don't, I mean, we have bragging rights, but unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, we don't brag much. We are southern Indians, so we typically are nice, docile people, so. You know, we, I wish I was born in Gujarat. I would have, I would have said a lot of things. Um, how do I see everything else spanning out? The blue revolution, aquaculture. Today, Telangana is the number one state on inland fisheries in India. In fact, there was a time when uh, people were surprised when I, when I told them. I was in Minnesota. The governor told me that I'm a land of 10,000 lakes. I smiled. I told him we are a land of 46,000 tanks. He was zapped. The 46,000 lakes and tanks in Telangana were not nurtured properly. But now with government of Telangana's focus, Mission Kakatiya, our aquaculture, our fisheries production is more than quintuple, quintupled. Today we are the number one state in, in inland fisheries. Now in fact, as recently as a couple of months ago, we've had a, an American company called Fishin, which came in and they're setting up a large aqua hub in about 350 acres near the Mid-Mane Reservoir in my district, Sirsila which will be India's largest aqua hub. So that is Telangana for you unfolding blue revolution. I also three, three more revolutions unfolding. A white revolution, dairy industry, rural livelihoods again, prospering. Again, another very important revolution is pink revolution, the meat processing industry in Telangana. In fact, our livestock has doubled over five years. Our sheep production has doubled over five years. So the meat industry is also doing rather well. We can export meat to the Middle East to the Southeast Asia. We can export fish to as far as the continent of United States. And the last revolution which I'm very upbeat about is palm oil production, yellow revolution, oil palm production, which again, Telangana government aims to do something truly magnificent. 20 lakh acres of palm oil cultivation in the next five years. A very ambitious goal, very audacious, but at the same time, I think, which, is, which will free our country from dependence on imports in terms of edible oils as well. So from manufacturing to services to knowledge economy, Telangana is covering all bases. My humble request to all of you, the south of India, with 19% of population, contributes to 35% of India's GDP. We have enough firepower from the south. Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, as much, I, as much as I compete with Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, let me tell you, I also grudge their success once in a while. I, I'm, I'm in admiration because, you know, I love the way they actually go about attracting businesses in Bangalore, in Chennai. 
So my humble appeal to all of you is, there are certain strengths that Tamil Nadu has, which I don't. I don't have a coastline. I'm a landlocked state. But there are certain strengths that I have, which they don't. So therefore, I think it's important for you as business leaders, as you think of diversification, please start looking at progressive states like Telangana and invest. Like I said, I'm not merely a southern state. We're also central to India in terms of logistics. Our centricity also matters. We cover all bases. You can cover all bases from one single location. You can make this your hub. You can have multiple spokes elsewhere. But I request Kamal Bali to announce that he's investing in his next plant <laughs> right here. Thank you very much. Jai Telangana. Uh, that was none other than uh, KT Rama Rao Garu for us. We fondly, for, um, for us, he is just KTR. And uh, you, you know, you see what you get kind of a personality that we have amongst us in Hyderabad. Uh, extremely glad that uh, he could be here with us this afternoon uh, to share his thoughts, his uh, vision, and uh, the vibrancy that he always brings to all of our interactions with CII. He's, uh, He's never a... You have to make me an honorary member. Sir. Yes, yes. I was going to just say that. You know, he's... Uh, I don't know how many programs we have had uh, not having him on board with us. And that's KTR Garu for us. Um, we thank you, sir. We can't thank you enough. Uh, and also, once again, uh, thanking both, both, of, uh, both of them being here, uh, listening to each other's uh, uh, perspectives and uh, comments and inputs. It was... Uh, I think it was just... Uh, it was, uh, it was a cake, and we also had the icing on the cake. I don't think anyone would disagree with me on that. Uh, with that note, um, I thank you both very much thank once you. again for your uh, presence and honoring us with your presence today. Thank you. Shukri. Thank you. Thank you.